Hey, 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 and welcome to another episode of Two Bald Knobs with myself, Six by Stevo, and above me, Mr. Skarner, also known as Plastic Crack Gaming. What's the crack? How you but doing, buddy? Plastic Crack Gaming's the channel. I'm scared here. Like, yeah. Plastic Crack Gaming, aka Skarner. I don't know. It gets very confusing. <laughs> it's a channel name. God, you know what I mean? It's not that head. <laughs> Oh, simultaneous sip in there. Oh, Mike That's as it. Well. Coordinated. Uh, Synchronised. <laughs> so I think this is our 23rd episode, I believe. 24th? 24th. So we're getting there. We're hammering through them. And uh, I was thinking we, we, we're going to have to do something uh, special for our 100th episode, aren't we, when we get there. It could you know, <laughs> it's like, He's laughing like I don't even know if we're going to. Two years that. from now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, I think maybe um, what we could probably do, we have to think of something special. It'd have to be, um, I don't know, maybe we'll make a professional video, something with no mistakes. No... I think we, yeah, for something like that to happen, it'd probably have to be outsourced. We'd probably have to pay someone to edit a video. You know what we'd I mean? Have to pay it's like because to between the deal well. was, yeah, yeah. Because this is the second time we've recorded this. Because someone didn't hit the fake record button. I'm sure that's happened before. You know what I mean? But professional standards, we give you everything above board. At least you know we keep you as honest as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, they know we've rehearsed. <laughs> this is how bad it is with rehearsals. Uh... It was rehearsed. Not only if we mess it up. Only if we mess it up, we get two shots at it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm having a crack of conversation. Oh, shit. I forgot to record. So, but yeah, moving on. Moving during this video, on. if you keep seeing my eyes flip to that corner there, it's because I keep looking to see that it is still recording. Um, <laughs> the <but> panic. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, ninth edition. Um, we'll start talking about that in a minute. But I suppose before we get to that, um, what have you been up to, buddy? Painting grots, 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 grots. Yay, painting grots. I've uh, 30 grots, three units of 10, and I've been slowly chipping away at the skin on them. Um, I've not been like pushing myself too hard. I've just been enjoying it. I think I haven't painted in about two or three days now, but I'm still, every week, I'm getting some progress done on the 1500 point list that we're, we're all doing. Um, at this stage, I'm just looking to get all the skin done on all the guys. I have... Mm -hmm. Um, 30 looters altogether, but they're not, they're not all in the 1500 point list. I just sort of decided if I'm going to be painting me looters, I might as well paint all of them. So I've actually been painting more than I need to, kind of, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I've just been painting the skin on them. Uh, top tip, the paint before you assemble the looters, because my God, <laughs> is it infuriating. <laughs> if I could go back to like 10 years ago to myself back then I'd slap him on the back of the bleeding head I would I'd like, oh, <laughs> yes. I don't blame you yeah that, it, it fills me with horror just the thought of it <laughs> luckily I don't have any looters so I don't have to face that problem yet <laughs> I love looters I always have but it's, it's a pain pain my god mm. yeah I bet well it's good you, you're still making progress on that 1500 point list chipping away at it getting it down there so that's good um, when are I, I going to finish before ninth comes out? You know, sorry to cut you <laughs> over there, but you know, when are I going to finish in time is another matter now. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that. Um, I mean, I, uh, I, yeah, I, I was, I was making really good progress on my list. Um, all through lockdown, that extra time I had on my hands, smashing through them. At least my definition of smashing through them. Very different to others. It's probably a snail's pace to some. Um, so I'm very slow. But um, yeah, I was making loads of progress and getting lots of stuff done. And I, I just kind of burnt out a bit. Um, and I've taken a break from it for a while. Uh, but I've still been hobbying. I've still been painting. Um, just not painting stuff that's in the list. And it, I mean, it started because I got a Cromlech um, Cannon, um, big gun, mm. with uh, some Grot Crew and everything. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I, was, I just started painting it. And it was in sub-assemblies because I wanted to do it on a base like I did with my mech guns. And uh, so I just started doing it. And then I was kind of rushing myself. I'm like, I need to get this done because I need to get back to painting my list. Um, so I kind of, I don't know, I wasn't overly happy with the paint job. But 
I think I'm probably just being a little bit overcritical. I just kind of, there was just certain elements of it and things that I wasn't happy with. Yeah, I could, I just, yeah, because I remember you posting up in the Orc community group mm. that we have. Probably links below. I think this is the below. So yeah, somewhere there's links below in our yeah, 40k Orc that's community up. group. So <laughs> I'm not aware I am in this place. Um, yeah, the, you posted it up there, and I think pretty everyone came to the same consensus that I did, where you seem to not be happy with the paint job yourself with your own standards. But I think everyone else is like, that's a cracking job. You're just being overcritical, but I can I can understand how that happens. We're our like own you're... biggest critics, always. Yeah, aren't we? yeah, we exactly. always are. And it's uh, there were certain elements of it because it was a resin kit. Uh, one of the Grot crew, um, they needed a little bit of cleanup being resin. Um, I broke one of their foot, feet off doing that because um, resin's very brittle sometimes, and his foot snapped off. Luckily, I caught Happy. it. It didn't go flying off across the room. <laughs> <laughs> actually i was cleaning them up out in the garden so even more like because if it had fallen in the grass oh, you, that was gone. <laughs> you know I had to have a peg leg um but yeah found a managed to repair that um but he had a bit he needed quite a bit of cleanup and so some of his detail and that was a bit good and obviously once i started getting to the painting i hadn't cleaned him up as well as i thought i had or there was bits on there and <sighs> yeah. that kind of tarnished it a bit for me his mouth in particular was really really hard to see where his teeth and mouth started and where what was his skin so he's kind of doing this <laughs> at least it looks like that. So he's got like a corner of his mouth open and i'm like i don't know but yeah it just i don't know little bits of it i think because i was rushing it as well to a degree um to get back to doing what i'm supposed to be doing yeah uh, but i've looked at it since and i'm like you know what it looks all right actually i'm quite happy with it actually on reflection um I think uh, trying to get some painting done when the snotlings were awake during the day as well <laughs> may have tarnished the experience somewhat and stressed me out a little bit. Um, yeah. So I might put some of the blame on them. Uh, but then I thought I finished it, get back to my list, and I haven't done that. I've started painting, um, which I'll carry on with during this stream probably, is some terrain, some uh, cover terrain. Oh, nice. The only reason I've been doing that is because I've got it out to do the uh, 40K community video that I uploaded uh, at the time this comes out, yesterday, um, all about terrain. So it just got me, I thought, yeah, I'll get that finished up because I built it ages ago and I thought it's the time that I painted it. But um, they've been uh, what are called palette cleansers. Um, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself with the list to get it done. And uh, it's just been nice to take a break from something I feel like I have to paint to something that I just want to paint for the fun of painting. Um, so it's yeah. still progress, just not progress on the actual list. But because uh, it's a different kettle of fish when you feel like you're sort of obliged to paint something oh, as opposed completely. to if you're just being spontaneous with it. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Um, and yeah, I, I've got to the same level with all the stuff. I've got this Death Killer War Trike, unit of boys, unit of grots, and a unit of tank busters that still need finishing for my list. They've all got paint on them. And it's basically just base colours. And it's the same point I want to stop every time. Just before I put the ink wash on, I go around and tidy everything up. And maybe put a second mm. layer on bits and just neaten it up. And that bit takes so fucking long. Because that's the bit where the perfectionist comes out in you. And you're like, when you're doing the base coats, you splash a bit. You're like, that's oh, all right, I'll tidy it up later. And it's all those tidy up laters that later on, you're fucked off that you have to tidy up later. And you're like, oh, it's it them. That's the trick I see a lot of our players. The owner's like, oh, you messed up the paint job. Well, there's rust going there later. You know. Oh, well, I do do that. Later. Yeah, I do yeah. do that with some things. Like, yeah, definitely. With vehicles, but this is a lot of infantry. Uh, vehicles, certainly. I've done that, like, I don't know, I splash a bit of black over the yellow. I'm like, I'm not painting yellow over that again. That can be a fucking dent or a scratch or a rust <laughs> or whatever. You know? I'll, it's a last I'll, cars. Good luck yeah, to it. I'll just uh, make that some battle damage. But yeah, so progress is being made. Just uh, as soon, I promise, I promise, as soon as this bit of terrain's done, I'm getting back on with that Death Killer War trike, getting him finished, and then cracking on with my them last. Just three, after him, it's just three units I've got to finish. Just three units. I can do that. I can do it. I can, and I will. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, I don't know, a, a bit of a symptom of the lockdown as well, I guess. The lockdown has given me a lot of extra time. <clears throat> and I kind of set myself the goal of getting this list finished by the end of lockdown 
Um, things are starting to lift now, which is great. And hopefully they don't revert back to the way they were. We'll have to wait and see on that. Um, but slowly they're being lifted. Things will slowly get back to normal. And then I'll have a lot less time on my hands. So it's kind of like, it's been a double-edged sword. I'm pleased to have the extra time to do the hobby. But also I am putting a lot of pressure on myself saying like, I won't get an opportunity like this again. Um, so this is your chance to get a lot of stuff done. Um, but you can put too much pressure on yourself sometimes, I think. Make it almost unhealthy, yeah. I think. It, it, like Especially when it comes to painting big units and stuff. Like I've mm. done it myself. I've talked about it a few times, you know, when I was trying to paint mobs of Tory York boys all in one go and didn't have the paint job sussed out. And you're just, you can, you can kill motivation very easily. Yeah. Um, like uh, for me personally, I find it comes in waves. Sometimes I'm barely doing stuff and then and all of a sudden something will hit and it's like, boom. I want to paint. Like I've painted probably more in, in the past six months. I've probably painted more than from New York Army than I have since I started collecting orcs. Like, like I, I was notoriously known as the guy who played with unpainted orcs. So now <laughs> so it's same. like, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, same. Um, actually, you're talking about that. Actually, it's kind of giving me a bit of an idea. Actually, I might do this for a video soon because um, I didn't want to do an I didn't want to do an in progress sort of look at my army. I wanted to just wait till it was done and go, boom, there's my army, shown off, all painted, yeah. get it on the scenery, on the map of all my scenery behind. Nice showcase video. I'd just be like, yeah, really proud. Here you go, fully painted army, showcase video. But actually, what I might do, just to cheer myself up a bit and remind myself that actually I've achieved a fair bit, is get together everything that I've painted during the lockdown and just say, this is what I've achieved during lockdown you know and that maybe because i once it's all done and varnished i put it in the storage case and it's locked away i'm not even looking at it it's done um but actually um then when i open it, i'm like actually i've painted, I've painted a fair bit, yeah actually. i do it's the same bad. thing yeah yeah i thought i do the same trick myself i've been like i'll paint 10 guys i'll put them back i'll be like i'll do this bit on them but I've, it just and then you, when you look back, you're like, oh, yeah, shit, I've painted like 30 guys. I thought I only painted 20 or whatever. You do. You um, forget, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I, I looked yeah. in there the other day. I opened the case to put the big gun that I just finished in. I was like, oh, yeah, I painted that weird boy, didn't I? I forgot about him. I've done them squigs. I've done them death dreads. You know, I finished them. I'm like, oh, shit, I've done a fair bit. So that's not bad. Um, but, yeah, I still need to do more. Still need to do more. <laughs> There's always more. But still, yeah. still buying more kids, Definitely. like, like you got the yeah. prophecy of the wolf. Yeah, well, that's the other. That's like... the other thing you've been up to, isn't it? Not just painting stuff. You've been buying stuff, hoarding it. <laughs> yeah, mate. Well, you know, I've been waiting a while. <laughs> I ordered it back in what March? When was the pre-orders March? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what is it May now? You know, this is why I wasn't too worried. Some people were going nuts getting through with waiting for the boxes, which I couldn't understand. If you're new to the hobby. Mm. And the uh, Psychic Awakening boxes was one of the first things you ordered. I could understand you wanting to go and get stuck into it. But for the the the, the more veteran players, such as Especially myself... Especially bit... right at the beginning of lockdown. Yeah. It's like, oh, when I get that, oh. I'll get that Prophecy of the Wolf box. That'll give me loads to do during lockdown. I'll be happy painting up Gazzy and whatnot. And then like, eh, eh. No. <laughs> so yeah. I could understand. But for me, I've, I've plenty of kits. And then I'm getting more kits and... <laughs> yeah, make myself out of time, don't worry. Well, I suppose we should do, um, we should talk about ninth, shouldn't we? That's what we're yeah, here being for. the heading of the video, it, yeah, kind of, uh, you should. know. I guess my first question to you is, were you surprised when they announced it? Yes and no. I, like, it's what, we're coming into our third year in June. June would be three years since mm -hmm. 8th edition came out. So, you know, it, it, it depended on what pattern they were going with. So kind of, yeah, and then no, in that it's like, like what, right now? Is they're going to announce it right now? Like, we still don't know the actual date it's coming out of, as of the time of making of this video. No. Some things may have changed between the... 24 hours or less between... Yeah, by the time you're seeing this, they may have announced a release that I doubt it, but they might have done. Unlikely, <laughs> but you never know. Better off Go probably, easy on us know. in the comments section, all right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, yeah, yeah, no. So it's like we're, we're in our lockdown, so there's like a lot of people out of work and they've all been... You know what I mean? It, they've a they've tough been time stopping their sales. So yeah, times I think we're you know time, times are a little bit tough at the moment. And then there's the price hike coming up as well. So it's like, 
you know, I think it sort of corresponds mostly probably with, you know, Games Workshop share price. But, you know, <laughs> I don't want to start a flame war in the comments section, lads. You know what I mean? <laughs> Takes the attention off those price hikes, doesn't it? <laughs> mm, uh, you know. <laughs> Everyone's so talking yeah, about no. it. Don't yeah, worry no. about those prices. Here's a shiny new edition. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I guess um, I, 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 I mean, I wasn't surprised because um we we, talk, we chatted um we were chatting with dim um the three of us uh, the other night and talking about the uh the big reveal i think which was coming up the next day and i think it was dim that said what do you think it's going to be and my first choice was i think it's going to be a new primark um probably full grims coming back or something um but then the second thing i said was or ninth edition um so then when i saw it i wasn't really surprised um but yeah i think um it's it's going to be a good thing in a way that it's coming out now that it's been announced now i'm sure it's going to be music to these like small businesses is that um stock gw products because they've obviously lost loads of money and been closed and we know that a new edition of the game is a big seller it, it, it spurs on enthusiasm for the the hobby and the game all over again and it, every time they bring out a new edition it attracts new players and it brings people back to the hobby that have sort of drifted away a little yeah, bit. Um, happens, yeah. And so, yeah, just like a small business, like a, a hobby shop that stocks their products is probably going to be like, great, this is going to really help us start pick up sales again and get back into things once, you know, the lockdown's lifted. So it's, it's going to be a good thing from their perspective. And I'm sure Games Workshop might make a few quid out of it as well. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd agree with you there, especially for like the local gaming clubs. Um, like I was only talking to one of the guys from the local gaming club, uh, the Dublin Gamers Guild. Shout out to Dublin Gamers Guild, um, who play in Gamers World on Jervis Street in Dublin. So if you're in Dublin, Wednesday night is their 40k night. There you go, lads. They give you a little plug. Uh, Wednesday night, when the ball gets rolling again, they play 40k. And I was talking to one of the guys from the Dublin Gamers Guild, Stephen. Um, shout out to Stephen. How are you, bud? Um, yeah, I was talking to him because I remember when he got into the hobby and I was talking to him about the different editions and I was remembering um, uh, about uh, when he started. And I was talking to him about it. I was like, didn't you start in 50? He was like, yeah, he started uh, He started into the hobby like the last week before the, I think they announced sixth edition or something like that. So we were talking about, uh, yeah, that it has to happen to someone. Cruel. It's, it's bad, bad timing. You yeah, got I, in I the golden remember. age, just, <laughs> just, and then just as you're getting into it, the dark times start. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, we were talking about the editions when I, when I was chatting to him. I was, I was talking to him about uh, the editions and like the differences over the years that some editions have had, even on the gaming scene, the local gaming scene. Like he, he, we were talking about how seventh edition, like. That Wednesday night that 40K is played, you could walk in and there'd barely be a handful of people. Do you know what I mean? You might see four people, if you're lucky, five, maybe three tables being played on. Um, and then when 8th edition came out, like the place is just rammed. Mm. You know what I mean? Like You'd have to book a table two weeks in advance. The difference between 8th edition and 7th, especially at the end of 7th, it was an absolute bleeding. It was a disaster, to be honest with you, the game. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a difference. And I hope it's a positive difference. I hope they build on that because it looks like mm. they've brought a lot of people, like you said, in a lot of new people, but also a lot of the older people back into the fold as well. You it's know funny. I mean? so if they I've can been, build on that, I'd be happy. I've been chatting to a couple of people actually that have sort of, they've asked me like, well, what can I expect from the new edition? Cause this, this is the only edition I've ever known. Um, Cause I mean, actually eighth did bring a lot of new people into the, into the, the hobby in the game. Um, and so they're like, what, what does this mean? You know, um, and like you say, I think it's good that everything they've said so far sounds promising, doesn't it? I mean, and, it, and it's going to because it's GW propaganda speak, you know, like they, they're very proud. Best saying, edition ever. Is, and I'm sure they've said that, that last before. time and the time before that and the time before that. They've said that at least, at least seven times. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I and, love it, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they 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 they're, <laughs> they're not shy about um, banging their own drum, are they? But uh, way, I mean, you know, it's good. I mean, it's if, to those people who are this is their first edition, um, and they're like obviously the good thing is that this is not a massive leap from like seventh was to eighth, is it? That was 
I now that was a system clean, reboot. Yeah. yeah. And they if hadn't this done isn't that. that. I, they hadn't no. done that since third edition. From second to third edition was a, mm. a system reboot pretty much. And then seventh to eighth edition was a big reboot as well. Mm. The editions in between like third to fourth, fourth to fifth, fifth to sixth. Sixth was a bit of a weird one. Yeah. And even seventh edition, there were changes, but like in between those editions, like you you do what's happening now. So like a new edition will come in and you'll still be able to use your current codex because they'll design uh, the next edition with the current codexes in mind, especially the, the later ones, the later editions. And then they'll update your codex in the next edition. I think some so factions sometimes had the same codex even... through yeah. all of those editions. <laughs> near exactly, enough. I was literally about to say that. I one. think um, uh, Dark Elder, as they were known then, I think they had um, like a codex running for just loads of editions. Um, they were or so Orcs had one as well. Yeah, the, yeah. The Orcs, the Orcs had a, codex lasted a while. Like, Necrons was yeah. the same as well. Had Necrons through third, fourth and fifth. Um, yeah, it's uh, and that's what we're going to expect from this edition. Although... I don't foresee many of us, if any of us actually, not getting a new codex for this edition, even though we don't need them. I think just at the speed they release books at now, and they know it's like a license to print money, don't they? So I'm fairly confident that 90% of factions, if not 100% of factions, will get a new codex at some point through ninth edition. But hopefully they won't rush them so much. They kind of had to for eighth because we were all stuck with indexes. So they were kind of, we need to get them all out quick. Um, and that was a little bit at detriment, I think, mm. as we've talked about before. I don't, I don't, I don't know, I'd have to disagree with you on that one. Books. They didn't They didn't have to go around it, go about it the way they did. And I know this is going to sound negative to st- some, but I think they should have prioritised um, redoing codexes for current factions instead of bringing new ones out. Like I, I remember being. I thought told you were just going to say I think they should have prior, prioritized orcs. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. No we one in our comments the, would disagree with you. <laughs> but we're told it's the year of the Xenos, and they come out with a Custodes codex. It's yeah, like are you it's not true. having a blade. Are you having a blade and laugh? Like, come on, you know. But, uh, well, you know, we'll do that. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we're good. We're, we're already seeing some Xenos love, which is great. Um, I guess what I was, obviously we know now what's going to be included in the starter box. Um, not it hasn't been hundred confirmed by them, but it's been pretty much shouted to us that it's going to be a box with Necrons and Primaris, and even the contents of the box has been heavily ruined from those two pictures, which shows the two armies like this is what we're likely to get in the box. Um, but it's great to see um, Necrons getting some love and being a boxed game army. Uh, he doesn't care. Like, I, I suppose. Look, <laughs> I'm sure Idix like furiously typing. <laughs> oh, that, that boy's that boy's been going hell for lever on his videos, and I don't blame him. He's he's he's, he's going for it, trying to cover all the news frantically. He's got so oh, much yeah. to cover. I I, oh, da- I you know what I mean. <laughs> he must be knackered. I feel, I feel sorry for him. Yeah, he's like yeah. you when there's a, an October coming out. You're just yeah. like I can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, they might release some more news. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm, I'm it's great to see because we've. For so long now, and over 8th in particular, I mean, not just 8th, through many editions, but particularly 8th, has been a very, very heavy focus on Imperium versus Chaos. Um, and we've, we've had bits of, you know, we've, we've got some stuff through 8th. Orcs have got some stuff, and other Xenos races have got some stuff. Uh, but it's very much been focused on So it's cool to see Necrons getting that love. And remember what it did for uh, Death Guard, through when the launch of eighth death guard became a massive faction with a hugely expanded range and i don't think they're going to stop with the necrons at just what you get in the box I mean, we've already seen all that new stuff they've shown um new monoliths new silent king new tripod looking walker thing. they got all sorts of stuff um so yeah i'm happy for the necron players um and necrons are a faction which we think we get neglected. left out. Yeah, we we yeah, think we get neglected. it hard, and we remember that like, some of these other factions. What do you mean we? They? They? <laughs> what, what's this? Well, they, they Your get inner neglected. Necron shiny head show on here. <laughs> no, I'm saying it? I'm saying we yeah, as all players we think we got it tough sometimes, but we actually get a lot more attention and love than some of these other factions. Which keeping get... me eye on you, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you know, say, think of Necron players, Dark Elder players, Sisters of Battle players. Um, 
you know, they, they've gone through some really tough times of like no love whatsoever. So it's, it's cool to see that. And hopefully they won't be the only Xenos faction which gets some love through ninth. But uh, I know you're not remotely interested, but what do you think of the new Necron range? Um, new Necrons? Um, yeah, I like some of the stuff. Like the Destroyer looks like... Uh, like super chunky compared to the mm. the previous one. The, um, I like the Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds, uh, Mars tripod deals. They look pretty cool. Yeah, they're really um, cool looking. But I'm not really into super spindly miniatures. So like floating on ethereal stuff because... Like snap. in my mind, <laughs> because yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. I mean, they, they make great display pieces, but yeah. I would, I wouldn't want to be having to transport that to the local club. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, they're not as bad as some factions, are they? Um, oh, no, man. I think Dark Elder will always, or Drakari will always take the crown for the the spindliest of spindly models. Um, but um, yeah, I think I think the range, what they've done, and I, I, we were chatting about it the other day, me and you, and. I said that the way they've um, updated the Necron range when they come to doing Orcs, which fills me with... Hope and dread yeah, at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> probably more dread than hope, to be fair, because I really like a lot of the existing miniatures we have, especially the boys' kit and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I worry the, what they I think, would do I think with what it. I, uh, I think and what a lot of players like is the modularity. Yeah. We lose that modularity. A lot of and, people are going to be pissed and, off. And, and, the, and the aesthetic look of them as well. And yeah. one thing I really like about these, now I'm just talking about not the new Necron miniatures, because there's lots of them that look really cool, but the ones that they've updated. So the Warriors, the Destroyers, um, and something else, which I can't remember now, but the ones that they've just updated, so they're existing miniatures that they brought the new ones. The new Necron Warriors, I think you could put them on the table with the existing ones, or the old ones now, and they wouldn't look out of place together. They, you could put them in the same army, and they wouldn't. people would notice, oh, they're the older models, or they're the newer ones. They would know, but they, they've been updated in a way that they've taken them a step further. They look a little bit more detailed, a little bit better, but they don't make the old ones look crap. And I think that would be, that's a really hard thing to nail because um, if you improve it too much and it change it too much, it, it the, outdates the, the old changes, model yeah. massively, um, which GW yeah. probably want to do, but us as collectors don't want that. Um, we would still like our existing 200 odd orc boys that, um, to still be, <laughs> look, yeah, to still look, Good and not be completely outclassed and outdated compatible. by new ones. Yeah, yeah visually compatible. compatible. You compatible. don't want to change the aesthetic so much that it becomes jarring to the no. point where it looks like a different game. Or so, maybe yeah, I, just think, I just think what they've done with the Necrons, if if and when they do that to the Orcs, I hope they they take it in that same way and deliver that same results because I think they've nailed it with the Necrons. I think they've done a really good job. Well, it it depends. Like I can understand how some people. It's all a matter be, of taste, but yeah, it is a matter. It is pretty much that. It's all a matter of taste. I can understand how there's probably some Necron players who don't like it because they've changed the aesthetic of them mm -hmm. enough that some folk might not like it. Like I've uh, seen the some Necron warriors, some people saying that as well. They don't don't yeah. like them and that, but they would look a bit more decrepit and, and more nailed than normal, don't they? Which I, I like really it. like. I like. I like it. My yeah. old Necron army was all painted rusty, and uh, yeah. lots of people would say like. And why would they go rusty? They've been alive for millions of years. I'm like, I don't know. They just look cool. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> rule of cool. I just like rusty Necrons. <laughs> That's not a euphemism. <laughs> yeah, it, it just depends. Like, uh, uh, with any change, you know, some people aren't going to be happy because it goes in an opposite direction of what they visually want. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But like we were saying, more importantly with Ninth Edition, it's the rules changes, I think, that a lot of people are going to care more well, about. What, Obviously, what, Necron players are care, but... Before, before we get into the new rules, of that, what about the new primary stuff? <laughs> I don't know, I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> I think, um, we'll just cover it really quickly. Um, I think it's cool that they've um, released a new prime. they're bringing out a new primary lieutenant. Uh, that's really cool because uh, about time, GW. I mean, seriously. oh yeah. Um, but no, um, that's what the game needs more of. They've got 
close combat primaris marines now marines with chain swords which is a lot of attention which is good for the marine players close um, combat yeah yeah so yeah okay. <laughs> which we will get into over the rules obviously but yeah um so yeah um i mean reroll joe i know my regular opponent who i play all the time my nemesis he is plays purely terminators deathwing so he is holding out for primaris terminator variants um uh, so i said well i think they might come this year. They're probably on the cards. Let's they're be probably honest. on the cards. They're, they're probably on the cards. Um, so I'm saying this stuff is good. They've got new primaris bikers and stuff, haven't they? So they're they're moving forward with it because um, the primaris range has been very limited and very generic, hasn't it? Like we saw that with our Prophecy of the Wolf, the Space Wolf stuff in there. Other than Ragnar himself, the guys he had with him were just generic marines and they... There was nothing space wolfy about them. infiltrators or something. I don't know. I was looking through the, I can't the, what they're called. the they all sound the same. Yeah, they're insulators, like insulators. Uh, did they sneaky security they sneaky ones? Guys yeah. or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've sold mine off already. Yeah, you know I, mean? so I don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, so there you go. We've talked about the primaries now. Uh, what about the new logo? <laughs> it's a new logo, like. You That's got I mean? some people hot under the cover, man. Some people are like, oh, they're done. <laughs> I, like, I think it looks good. I think it looks all right. It looks clean. It's a, and It's a 40K logo. I'm like, am I supposed to care that they've changed the logo? I, I guess it's know. a big deal to summon it because it's the first, they haven't changed it since third edition. They had the yeah, second edition, a little goldy bit a one, didn't yeah, they? And then yeah, they yeah. had this one. And we've had this one for so long now that it's like people are quite attached to it. I think it looks all right. I think it looks okay. I'm happy it's, with it. I think they're just going yeah. with a whole image, aren't they? They've released a website and everything. And they've released oh, yeah, the trainer, it's a re-sort re sort of branding and stuff. Mm. Yeah, mm. definitely. So, um, But yeah, we need to get into the important stuff, don't we? And start talking about the rules and things that they've uh, been talking about and the changes to 8th. And uh, I guess... The, He's looking the, at his notes. I'm looking down at my notes, actually, and there's, there's three things I've noted that are very significant. Um, and I guess one of which, which is... Probably, I would say, one of Eighth's biggest weaknesses, at least to a lot of players, was um, vehicles um, and the way vehicles work. And for anyone wanting to go back to previous editions where you had armor facings and stuff, it's not happening. Um, sorry to tell you. Um, but they are working on, by the sound of it, improving vehicles effectiveness in the game because i've noticed a lot of people not using vehicles in the game and there's a lot of reasons for that um, one of which being that a vehicle can be bogged down in combat by uh, infantry yeah and not be able to do anything and that's 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 crucial to you in game if you've got a big expensive battle tank armed to the teeth and then a little unit of grots gets in combat with it and it can't fight very well because it's a vehicle it's locked in combat with them and it can't do anything. It misses out a turn of shooting and stuff. It's, ah, well, you know, as a blood axe, I wasn't too bothered. I just fall back and shoot them. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have a good regard and you haven't got special rules and that. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, it's, I think it sounds like they're going, so they've talked about um, blast weapons, haven't they? And vehicles being able to shoot even when locked in combat. In combat. Yeah. Which is going to be interesting to see what, exactly how that will take effect whether you're going to be shooting at the unit you're in combat with or to be able to shoot out of the combat which is i think what i think it's going to be um but we don't know it might be to shoot anything including what's in combat with you but i don't know that could cause some anomalies and things in the rules let's see what happens like from what i'm hearing the tidbits of stuff like it it sounds uh, a lot better like the flyers um, changing because I'm hearing that you know the standard games are going to be four by four board size, so flyer rules are changing in that regard. You know what I mean? Yes, um, yeah, flyers is another one. Yeah, changing the way that they um, move around the battlefield and stuff. Which makes make, makes sense. Like, yeah, I haven't had much experience using flyers in this edition. Um, I've used them a little bit, and it is problematic um, with the minimum movement and the turning arcs to just make sure you don't <laughs> smash Go into the side the of the board. The board. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's so that, yeah, it was ridiculous. Be, so it's, it, uh, by the sound of it, they're kind of talking about that, I think what I gather from it is that it can fly off the board and then fly back across yeah, for like place, another yeah, place it down again. I was saying that, I was saying that about like, 
Which is how they used to work, isn't it? In the older editions and stuff. Yeah, there was like stuff. strafing runs and stuff mm. like that. Yeah, yeah, things, things like that. Um, yeah, definitely. They, they changed the rules to the flyers. There's a few things I'd like to see as well. Um, hopefully, changed and improved. For instance, flamethrowers not being the best anti-aircraft guns in the game. You know. Uh, yeah. and, you know, but the change in how cover works, the change in how shooting through cover works, the change in how uh, everybody will hit on a six no matter what, the change in the amount of uh, modifiers you'll get to hit, a negatives to hit. So there's got to be a lot of talk, what, talk. I, what I'd say quality of life one changes for the yeah. Game. We're talking like is where about the uh, the the shooting that um just still on the vehicles part is that um they obviously talk about the uh, the blast weapons and stuff having maximum effect and what the word on the street seems to be is that anything listed as a blast weapon which i'm sure will be in the thing like all these weapons will have the blast weapon special rule or whatever um is that it's kind of those um random number of shots um against hordes they're saying they will get the maximum number of shots um so like if it's a d6 it'll get six um yeah which has sent a lot of people in our community all players going <sighs> we're doomed lads, we're screwed we're screwed lads, <laughs> calm down all right don't don't be you know the sky's not falling in all right wait <coughs> I'd, I'd just like to say this to people some people get very panicked wait until you have the real book in your bleeding yeah. hands before you go nuts all right just there's so much more be to calm. be revealed yet and so many let's more details <laughs> Even what has been said, we don't know the full rules yet and exactly how no, it'll be implemented. Exactly, yeah. And it will there will be rules in there that do not work to your army's favour. And there will be other rules that do work to your army's favour. So yes, if you're running a horde army, it is gonna be you're gonna have to watch out for that by the sound of it. Um but also you're gonna have access to those weapons as well, and you're gonna be able to dish out that sort of same firepower and things as well. So like with every edition that comes out and any new codex or whatever, we adapt our list, don't we? We adapt our armies. Well, I'm, just, I'm literally them. thinking that. I'm thinking, like, if the we blast do. weapon rules kicks in from 20 models, you, we might start seeing units of 19 orc boys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, 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 as I said, it might change the way people might opt to go with more truck boys and stuff and things like that and change that sort of way. Um, but then they've, they've also talked, but not really gone into detail, but talked about melee um, and improving it but they haven't given us anything on that so i don't really know mm. again how and how that will be affected and whatnot um but yeah it's going to be interesting to see um what was the other thing i've got nothing noted down terrain terrain yeah, ter <laughs> <laughs> what? who's he laughing at me just kind of looking down at me <laughs> it's like hold on <laughs> terrain <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah warhammer yeah War. apparently yeah. they're, they're going to be changing terrain hell how it interacts and they need with you. To. They need to draw the line of sight through to terrain, and you know what I mean. All that type of stuff. Too. Current terrain rules are, are shit. garbage. They, they are, are they garbage. Are. And this is coming from someone who is a big fan of Eighth. Um, I love Eighth Edition. I really do. It's one of my favourite editions ever. I always speak very highly of it. But the terrain rules are dire and crap and. To the point where I think all the tournaments and stuff, they don't even use the rule. They, they, they got their own clarifications and settings from the ITC rules and stuff that people use for the terrain and things to make it clear cut and that. But it, it needs, I don't feel that there's as much benefit from the terrain as there used to be in older editions. And the rules are very vague, very half assed. Everyone's confused by them. I found like when I play games of eight, above any other edition I've ever played, there is much less um, stopping of the game to discuss, hang on a minute, no, where well, you're disagreeing with your opponent and you have to look through your books and see who's right on a certain rule and whatever. That for me, through 8th, this is just me speaking personally, happens far less in 8th edition. But terrain, we've, so many games we've had a game where someone's trying to get up a bit of terrain to assault someone or whatever and we're trying to look and find the rulings of it and it's just always been a ball ache and I thought to be honest it's just me or just me and my opponent not quite grasping it but I've seen a lot of other people saying the same thing that terrain rules are shit um, currently and so it's great to see that they're going to focus in on them a bit and 
I mean, hopefully what they will do is good. I mean, just because they're working on it doesn't mean what they're going to give us is going to be good. It might, they might but make it worse. This is what worse, I mean, like, but... it's an improvement. If they're building on what they have, so yeah. if they're actually listening to what the feedback is, which they say they are, okay, um, we just need to see them put their money where their mouth is then and, you know, we need to follow through with it. Yeah, we need the rules to be fairly... I'd like the rules for terrain to be fairly streamlined and simple and easy to remember. Um, and it's fantastic to have loads of different rules for loads of different types of terrain. But you can go too far with that. And you're already having to remember all the rules for your own army and your own data sheets and your own special rules, plus your opponent's stuff. And then to remember like that every little piece of terrain, like that affects it that way. And that You don't want to go too far with it, but I think they need to flesh it out a bit more and just make it clearer and just... I don't know, easier to define and it just, it just needs to be better basically. So it's good that they're focusing in on that. I think two of the yeah. weakest points of eighth really was vehicles and terrain. Um, so it's great to see that when I hear someone complaining about eighth a lot, those are two things that do come up a lot, especially the vehicles one, especially the vehicles. Um, I don't think that's going to address all those critics. I don't think because a lot of them are still, wanting the armor facings and stuff to come back and like i say it's not going to go there but at least it could go some way in making them better because they are they're not a lot of the vehicles aren't great in eighth and they're, they're not ultra competitive certain ones anyway um i think discounting things like knights and stuff knights are very good um <laughs> and new primaris tanks i hear are very very good <laughs> but uh other vehicles not so much and uh, I'm looking down at my notes again, mate. Um, they talk about, uh, and I think one that's going to uh, please you is the reworking of detachments and command points in that it's going to be, there's going to be a trade-off. So you can still do your soup armies. You can still have multiple detachments, but at a cost. So by the sounds of it, what I gather from it is that you get, uh, a pool of command points that when mm -hmm. you start building your list you're spending them so rather than detachments and things gaining you cp you're they're costing you, you cp yeah so you're paying out the cp to get a battalion detachment out. and it's going to encourage players to try and fill out uh, like a battalion detachment or a brigade detachment rather than have several small detachments and just have the minimum required to get the most out of them and also to mix from different codexes and whatnot and i think that's a positive move definitely um yeah uh, like uh, the way it works now uh, it's mostly people do that they just try and milk battalions uh to get the most command points because that's what the game's all about now is mm -hmm. stratagems and command points like they're they're nearly more important than the bleeding units you bring at this point you know what i mean you're worried about unit abilities, uh, stratagems, and command points to generate them. Uh, that's that's the current strong point of 8th edition. Uh, well, that's the current emphasis of 8th edition. So I'd like to see them move away from that a bit, but I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens in that regard. I, I, mean, I, I don't think... I think, actually, um, you'll be sorry to hear, I think they're going even further into it. Um, I think stratagems we'll are going to become uh, an even, maybe not an even bigger part of the game, but they're going to be just as important, certainly. But I do like how they are changing the way they work because I think it will encourage more of that traditional style army building of you have a, you can still build those multiple detachment armies. You can still do that, but it, you'll lose loads of CP. And we, like you just said, stratagems are they're, they're game changing they're so powerful that to spend it on having multiple detachments is not going to be a good way to spend um you're going to want to save them so you've got stratagems to use in game because they're so powerful so it's really That's really going to encourage people to build an army not a collection of heroes and a collection of big killy elite stuff um you, you know it's going to be much more in your favor to fill out those detachments and fill out every slot in them before you even think of taking another detachment. So it's kind of taken us back a little way to the old Force Org chart and stuff, and actually, and which I think is a positive move, and soup is something that does um, ruffle some people up the wrong way, certainly. 
Um, right, but super, super armies were there to try and exploit the detachment system to get the most out of it. So, mm. But this is going to happen. No matter what system they come up with, if it's not play-tested and waterproof, people will find the exploits in it and they will exploit it. <laughs> That's what and happens. That will happen with ninth, like it's happened with every other yeah. edition. <laughs> You'll see where the holes in the game are, and people will. And know. because of the internet, we will all know those exploits within a week, and everyone will be doing them it instantly. Well, no, <laughs> and then they'll have to hours, FAQ hours. the hell out of it really quickly, and change the ruling yeah. really quickly, and we'll have chapter approved, and hundreds of books and erratas. <laughs> And the cycle starts anew. That's never changing, people. <laughs> it, this is true. If you've never gone through an edition change, this is always the same as well. Editions tend to get messy near the end of the mm. end of their life cycle. Bloat. Like, look at they get bloated mm. because it starts off clean, and then they bolt more and more crap on. Uh, the power creep will creep up, um, and then you'll know it will be like two or three years later it'll be oh yeah we're due a new edition there's too much crap attached to this it's a cycle mm. it builds up it builds up it's cleaned off new edition it builds up yeah you know what i mean that's the way it's the way it goes definitely definitely but uh but yeah it's um like i say it's it's a lot of speculation at the moment isn't it it's a lot of speculation yeah. on how at the game is going to be whether mm. we're going to fall in love with ninth whether we're going to look back and and think of ninth as a was that it was a really good addition um i i at the moment i'm feeling positive as a fan of eighth um it sounds like this is going to be eighth but better um it, eighth with you know improvements and tweaks and fixes um, so for me, it sounds ticking all the boxes. It, it sounds like a good positive move. Um, I haven't heard anything that I dislike yet. Um, so, but we'll have to wait and see because there's still, I say, there's still so much more to be revealed. We don't, we yet. don't know. There's just there's so much to, for, like, from what I'm hearing, um, and like when you'll know me, I'll openly criticise them any time I hear something I'm not happy with. But from what I'm hearing so far about changes that are going to happen to it, um. I'm liking the sounds of it. I'm really interested in um, this whole crusade thing that they're talking about, mm. where it'll be like you'll be able to gain experience or something like that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, that's really piqued my interest. I'm like, oh, what's going on there? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it seems it's been sort of piqued a lot of people's interest. I've seen a lot of people talking about it and things. I, I just, I don't know whether it's going to be one of those things that they hype up and talk about a bit and then it kind of ends up being nothing or something that nobody does. To name one, yeah. Um, and they do things like that, don't they? Oh, I, I love that they mentioned Combat Patrol. They talk about the scaling up and down of the game. Everything. They mentioned Combat Patrol, so I'm really hoping there's a section in the book that's, they're talking about the scale of it. If that's all going to be in the book, like to play your smaller games, these are, these are some tweaks to the rules. To play your bigger games, these are some tweaks to the rules. That for me would be great. Um, I'd, I've been crying out for ages to have like official rules for Combat Patrol again, and they've not done that for I don't know a long time. Um, I think it, if memory serves me right, I think we first got like Combat Patrols in a core rulebook in fourth edition. Mm. Yeah, it was it. definitely around fourth think, and fifth, wasn't it? I, yeah, I remember about, playing a lot of Combat Patrol. Edition, and that yeah. became one of my most played game types at the time. Oh, Two hundred points. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was like, Quick game to meet Bill. I think it was 400, it. wasn't it? I think it was 400 well, I, I, points. Could be. Could have been 400. It's a fair few years ago over time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, really good. So I'm, I'm, I'll be I'll be looking forward to that if they if, if they manage to get that right and nail that. And uh, yeah, it's, it, I don't know. Like I say, um, some people are really excited about it. Some people are doom and gloom about it. Some people think their faction's screwed. Some people are already planning to sell their orc armies. Um, just calm down, just calm, calm down, down. Jesus. Adapt, like. Change and overcome. You will be fine. You'll be fine. Be grand. It you will benefit. I mean? it, certain rules will benefit certain factions. And certain There'll be a shift in the meta. And it'll right. definitely be that some lists, if you built, especially for competitive players, if you built a super f hyper focused army that is specific to uh, how an edition works, one aspect of the game, then yeah, 
you're probably going to get shafted because you've narrowed down your army so much. Yeah, and but, if you've been buying all the units that are powerful and built, yeah, yeah, up, this is the problem. I've got news for you, buddy. You have to buy some of the other stuff because they right. do it all the time. Units that were shit are going to be good. Like you watch, you watch the stats of Necron Warriors go right fucking up now because Necron Warriors have been shit for ages. Not shit, but just pointless because. You can have immortals as troops. They're so much better for the points. So literally, there's no Necron players that use warriors currently. But I guarantee you, their new codex, their new rules or whatever, Necron warriors are going to be the the hot shiznit, you know, because they've sold all their immortals. They don't need to sell anymore. They want to sell these warriors now, so you can bet your ass. So, yeah, buy buy miniatures, even if they've got shit rules, because new additions, new codexes changes things, and suddenly those shit ones become really good ones again. And uh, yeah, so it could. You might have some units in your army that fade out a bit, and you're not because we might find some new use out of units that you previously never used before because they weren't that good. And they might it, it all depends. Like it depends on your focus. Like for me, I like I have pretty much every unit in the orc army because that's what I want. I I collect the orcs. I like different units, and you know I don't always bring stuff that's just powerful in the codex yeah. you know what i mean you like to have a bit of fun and it's always cool because it can get a bit monotonous especially if you're going to gaming clubs all the time and you know there's a culture in your gaming club i'm not saying all of them but if there's a culture in your gaming club where it's only what's strong in the meta it can get a bit monotonous you know oh, what i mean really it's like dull. really dull. you'll see the same units again and again so it all depends what you want out of the game. Yeah. Seeing seeing units that aren't always on the table, I enjoy that. If mm-hmm. somebody comes along with an army and they're like, oh, they're playing Tyranids, <laughs> they've got hordes of guns and <laughs> stuff, I'm like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll go, I, I, with a very new addition or anything new, like we were saying earlier, it, there's an apprehension, isn't there? There's a fear. And I, I just, I don't know, the worst thing that could have happened for me was they said, no, it felt. We're, we're simplifying things like, no more points, no more add number list. We're just going PowerPoints now for me. I'd have been like, no. Um, and obviously, you know, they they hype that they hype that up big time at the start of eighth. And I think there's some people that pay PowerPoints. There's quite a few actually, but no one plays. Well, them. yeah, they keep they, every time we say there's nobody who plays it. There's, oh, yeah, there's always one in the comment section. <laughs> Although I haven't I haven't heard that one guy say I play open play for quite a while. But yeah, a lot of people play PowerPoints, which is for I've I've played PowerPoints just. Um, uh, when I was getting my boy to play, because it was good for a newbie. Yeah, it's quick. Uh, it's quick to get make into a list, like. quick and easy. Yeah, it saves a port. Um, and, that, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that would have been a worry for me because we've seen them do that with. Uh, remember the launch of Age of Sigma, and the internet went fucking mental <laughs> within the day because, well, when they released Age of Sigma, there were no points at all. Oh, all right, yeah. Right now I remember time. there was some rage, but I just didn't. and I, I remember like even as a, I was not a fantasy player, I'm not an Age of Sigma player, but I watched the videos and stuff just out of interest. Now, and I remember at the time thinking they did what? What? They've just killed themselves. What are they doing? And uh, they sort of slowly fixed it with things like the General's Handbook and stuff, and bringing points back into it, but. Yeah, if I, I had think, a tinfoil uh, hat, I'd say maybe they intentionally did it to drive the old guard away and bring in a whole new generation of gamers. <laughs> well, they certainly ah! that. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken quite a while for Age of Sigma to brush itself off that stink of its early. Um, I don't no, know. I think don't it was it. more. I think oh, it was more incompetence. I think, it, and thank God they did that before they did Ape. Because I think they learned a lot of lessons from the launch of Age of Sigma. I, I think so, yeah. And then they revamped 40k, and they were nowhere near as drastic. Um, I mean, blowing up the universe is a bit different. We had people saying, oh, "Are they going to do that to 40k?" And it's like blowing up the universe, ripping it in two, making time irrelevant anymore. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they're enough. Yeah. <laughs> they were skirting around it. Yeah, yeah they, they, you know, <laughs> they may have not gone the the whole hog, but you know, they've 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 gone down that path a little bit, in some people's opinions. Obviously, not everyone's going to agree. You know what I mean? It's it's interesting to hear your thoughts on ninth anyway, as because I mean we've kind of come at this. Is I'm kind of I'm a big lover of eighth. You not so keen on it, um, but it's interesting no. to hear your viewpoint of of a, a bit more of a critic of eighth. But seeing that some of these changes that might 
make this edition, new edition preferable to you. You may enjoy this more than eighth by the sound of it, what they're talking about now. Um, yeah, from what I'm hearing, like, because there's like a few things with like the terrain and stuff. Like, what always annoyed me is the change from terrain and the save that it gave. Like, the save going from just plus one to your armor mm -hmm. made no sense. It was counterintuitive then. So it's like, okay, so the most heavily armored units in the game get more benefit from cover than those with the least amount of armor when in reality it should be the other way around that always annoyed the hell out of me it really did it was it was little little bits of eight now i don't absolutely hate eight there's just bits of it that annoy me mm. you know what i mean um but I, I like that the game plays quicker but i think it lost a bit too much like I, th I think they threw the baby out with the bat water when they were like, "Oh, we'll streamline everything a bit." So, what I'm hearing for Ninth Edition, where they're talking about fixing terrain, fixing aircraft, because aircraft annoyed the, mm. annoyed the hell out of me. Like, there's a few different points that they're talking about fixing and changing that really annoyed me in the Eighth Edition. So, who knows? Like, if Ninth comes out, I might really like this one uh, more. So, you know what I mean? Like, even my yeah, favorite but... edition had problems. You know, I know. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no no edition that doesn't have problems, is there? Yeah. And even if even if you think uh, you you know of an you, that you, uh, there's an edition that you think oh, it was perfect, it nothing needed changing because stuck with that edition forever. Um, someone down the road will completely disagree with you, and they'll absolutely despise yeah. it because there are fans of Seventh. I are always like just like really, <laughs> but they exist. Um, and there's people that have, there are loads of have got a choice of all different editions that they like. I don't know what my favourite edition was. Um, for me, it's probably between fifth and eighth because I really like eighth. But I've got so many fond memories of fifth. Um, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this ninth edition, and I, it's so far so good. Um, stay on this positive train, GW, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. And I, I, I've realised as well we've been talking about so in depth. I said I was going to do some hobby during this. I haven't done anything. Uh, we've just been chatting. It's like an old uh, two bald knobs two episode, isn't it? Bobs, we just yeah. chatted. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah. I think we've pretty much covered it. I don't think there's too much more to say on it. Yeah, pretty. It's like it, there's a new edition coming out. Some people are going to be super hyped. Some people are going to be super bummed. Myself, I'm just like, let's see what happens. You know what I mean? I'm just. I, I'm not dreading it. I'm and I'm not like, oh my god, yeah, let's drive that hyper train, go! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a little bit on the train. Yeah, you're always on the bleeding hype train. Always on I the can train. Always, I can see you with your cap on and tooting the bleeding horn. <laughs> Someone said in the comment of one of my videos the other day, they commented saying I should re should replace Ringo Starr as the voice, the narrator on Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but uh, I get the best comments on my videos sometimes. Man. <laughs> Steve Older Swank Engine. Yeah, definitely like a sovereign and everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Someone you know, needs start to dressing conversion. up like the fat controller or something. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Just I, in I, Adidas I, tracksuit, though. <laughs> I, I think, I think uh, 40k is one of the few things in my life. I think I've just said it about it before that I'm in real life, I'm a bit of a miserable bastard. And uh, 40k is kind of my escape from that and the life of that. So I do still get that kind of that I don't get from much anymore is that excitement. And when they announce genuine big news like this, we've had loads of these big reveals and stuff. And you really look at me like none of that's relevant to me. I'm not bothered. Um, but this was a bit as relevant to all of us. Um, and it was it's, like, yeah, oh, I think that's okay. it. Okay, yeah. big, Everyone. exciting, cool trailer as well. The trailer was really cool. That was that was good. Um, and just yeah, it does. It's very easy to get caught up in that hype train, and uh, yeah, yeah, for some, boot, boot. <laughs> some of us, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I still got that that youthful exuberance, haven't I? Uh, <laughs> youthful enthusiasm, fair play to But yeah, it, yeah, like, you know. But hopefully, see. hopefully, mm. you never know, guys. Hopefully we may have our 1500 point armies painted and be able to deliver you an eighth edition battle report. But I doubt it. It'll probably be ninth edition by the time we play. Mm, <laughs> not with the way lockdown and travels are looking at the moment. You know what I mean? If we weren't yeah. in the situation we were in, I'd probably say, yeah. Um, yeah. Which is kind of sad, actually. I'm, I may have played my last game of eighth. We might have done. I might have played my last game of eighth, which will be sad. 
Um, but yeah, I'd like to see it, give it a goodbye game, you know, a farewell game. Maybe we'll still. Well, I enjoyed my last game of eight, so you know, I'd be happy with with that. You know what I mean? Which we played on a four by four. Now that I think about it, with fifteen hundred points, so maybe it's more <laughs> like night than I thought. There you go. <laughs> But yeah, I think we've covered pretty much everything there, haven't we? Um, I don't yeah. know when our next video is coming out because we make these as and when we can and when we want. Um, I don't know what we'll be doing on it. We might have some more news for you. We might just be doing some hobby and chat. It might be live. It might not. We don't know. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's 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 an outro to it. I don't know when the next episode is. All right? We don't know we'll what the next we'll be, episode, what it'll be we'll about we'll or see. our just, general direction, but it'll be keep, out. Just keep checking on the channels and you'll see it. Um, yeah. But yeah, please guys, hit the, um, hit the like button. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you want don't want to miss an episode of Two Bald Knobs, make sure you also subscribe to Plastic Crap Gaming. The links to both channels will be popping up at the end. Um, the buttons, so click on those buttons. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Um, and join the 40k orc community as well, because we always post yes. the videos on there. It's good crack. Yeah. It is good crack, good crack. Um, but yeah, um, anything you want to say, mate? Save me from waffling on any further. <laughs> well, that's good boy from Skarnir, and don't forget to drill your barrels. And it's six plus Stevo signing out. <laughs> <laughs>